So James Doherty from Unite. Friends, I am speaking today as a proud trade unionist and as someone who helped deliver a victory for workers in this city. As you will know, in the last year, workers at Seagate won a huge victory and secured recognition for our trade union, Unite. That was a long and difficult fight, but it was one where we knew we never stood alone. We received support from this community right across the city and the wider northwest. We received support from all our members of our own union, Unite, and indeed the wider trade union movement. And we received support from workers across these islands and indeed around the world. On behalf of union members at Seagate, I want to thank all those who have so supported us in our fight for recognition. I want to single out a few people too, uh, mostly the people here that work in Carnai Road and Unite in the office up there. Our original officer, Brenda Stevenson. Uh, <laughs> the office staff up there, Margaret and Miriam, without them, we couldn't have got where we got. Uh, and while the latest effort to win union recognition at Seagate started two years ago, it must be remembered, the reality is that workers have tried several times over the last 30 years to organise a union in Seagate, but management always found a way to let us know that a union would not be welcome. Over those 30 years, even though we weren't unionised, we still got uh, representation from the likes of Liam Gallagher and the late Phil Oakes. These two people must always be remembered too for getting us where we are today. So folks, the reality is, bosses wanted to keep things where they were, where they could give us what they want, or what they wanted, and we had no option but to take it. That was never acceptable to us, but after the COVID pandemic, it became intolerable. Seagate is a global leader in advanced manufacturing. The Springtown plant is one of only a handful of its kind anywhere in the world. The company and its shareholders enjoyed huge profits off the backs of our labour, but those profits did not trickle down fairly to the shop floor. When a company faced challenges, and because there was no union in Seagate, it was always workers who had to pay the penalty, whether that was in the form of job losses or pay cuts. During COVID-19, we, the operators, were classed as essential workers and we continued to work 24-7. But in hindsight, and following news that the company had been fined $300 million for dealing with a Chinese company, it makes me wonder, were we essential workers so that this $1 billion contract could be fulfilled? During COVID, Seagate became a $13 billion company. As we all know, we were all locked away in our houses. We were working from home, schooling from home. Subscriptions to things like Netflix and all went through the roof and all these things needed storage, so Seagate was in prime position to, to profit from this. Okay, So they started a restructuring after this. Post-Covid and with the cost of living crisis looming, we knew we needed to act. Workers in Seagate, that people probably don't know, were taking second and third jobs just to pay their bills and put food on their tables. We were given on average just over 3% pay rise, and this is after the company became a $13 billion company. We went begging to senior management for a better deal, but our cries fell on deaf ears. There was no money, they said. Things were tight, yet they never missed a quarter where they didn't pay 70 cents a share to their shareholders. So it became, we couldn't take any more, and we wouldn't take any more. It was a case of this far and no further. So we contacted Unite, and together we started to build a powerful organizing drive. We created a, a diverse group of leaders across all four shifts, we set up social media accounts and WhatsApp groups to communicate to our colleagues. We held meetings in the city that saw rising numbers at hand. We handed out quarterly newsletters at the gates where we were chased from the gates by managers born and bred on our streets. We started to have conversations on the shop floor with our colleagues about the trade union movement and the benefits that, that we could get from it. Management threw everything they had at us the longest legal challenge to a union recognition campaign in the history of the North. They took us to the High Court and we beat them. Yeah! 
they wouldn't accept the industrial court's decision that our bargaining unit was an acceptable bargaining unit of the operators based in Seagate. They flew over union busters from, from Amazon. They started a powerful corporate PR campaign. They, used to, they, they, they started saying things like Seagate was good, the dairy, and all this sort of stuff. They try to dissuade people. But we mustn't forget, Seagate was good to dairy, and we've seen that from day one. It's provided thousands of jobs over the last 30 years. But it must be remembered, folks, dairy was good for Seagate. Yeah! The workers in the shop floor during this campaign were, held, uh, were forced to have captive meetings. Anti-union propaganda was posted to our homes on several occasions and posted all over the factory site. We remained laser focused on our goal. We played clean. And as Lynn McKenty, our, our main organiser, I have a lot of time for Lynn. She deserves the freedom of the city for unionising and helping unionise the Seagate. Yeah. She, always, she always said to us, remain laser focused throughout this campaign. Don't get involved in any dirty tricks or any tactics. So all of this that they done, all of it was to try and fool workers that they didn't need a union. They spent hundreds of thousands of pounds trying to stop us. Money that would have been better off in the workers' pockets. They thought we would go away, and it was just another phase of us blowing off steam. But they underestimated the workforce in Seagate. They underestimated Unite, and they underestimated this city. <laughs> this was a battle we couldn't afford to lose. If we lost, we would have nowhere to hide. And we wouldn't just lose, we would be pushed all the way back to where we were in 1994. We knew that the odds were stacked against us, but that's when the solidarity kicked in. Our campaign for recognition was supported by the Dairy Trade Union Council, the striking housing executive workers who stood for months and end for, for fair pay. It was supported by striking public transport workers who brought the North to a standstill to win a pay increase. It was also supported, as you've probably seen, our banners throughout the city. Our banners were accepted in picket lines by the housing executive workers, by the TransLink workers, by our health and social care workers, and by our road service workers. And we won't forget their solidarity. We even, we even received support from Amazon workers in America who were facing the same union busters as us and a small group of Seagate workers at our sister plant in Normandy and who tried to get a union recognition there themselves. They told us that our fight was their fight. As our campaign progressed, we recognised that because of the lack of investment and the lack of decent jobs in the North West over the last 30 years, that Seagate, Seagate workers were viewed in a certain way by all our workers in the city. We realised that while we didn't feel like it, all saw our jobs as better and worth more than theirs. So we recognised the importance of what we were doing, not just for ourselves, but for workers across the city and the North West in general. We realised that it couldn't, it would that if we couldn't succeed in winning the unionization drive, what message that would send out to those workers in care homes or in hospitality, retail or the call centres who give us so much support and they, who have taken inspiration from our campaign. We knew we had a responsibility to deliver, a responsibility to win, and we redoubled our efforts. We, that spurred us on and then they, sorry, we drew inspiration from a wave of strikes by public sector workers fighting to win the cost of living pay increase. That spurred us on, and in, in the end, we won a historic victory on union recognition in Seagate. Yeah! It's a win that sends a message out that workers can organise and work on our, workers can win. So I strongly encourage others to join a union and to get organised. That's not just to win pay increases, improve conditions, or, or to improve health and safety in our workplaces, important that those are. But workers face major challenges ahead, whether it is ensuring a just transition to a sustainable economy, or securing jobs and workplaces that are changing with automation or artificial intelligence. We also recognise the global reality of war, of oppression, and of repression. We know that the workers' movement stands strong together for peace, and our movement stands with the oppressed people around the world. We will continue to fight. We must register the small wins as well as the big ones. And we must see every win as a building block to build stronger. So friends, 
I extend solidarity from the Seagate workforce to you on this International Workers' Day. I will finish with two quotes from the great Jim Larkin. The employers cannot carry on industry nor accumulate profits if they have not got the good will of the workers or the acquaintance in carrying on such industry. Organize, organize, organize. If you can organize Seagate, you can organize anywhere. Yeah. Thank you for your solidarity.